let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, can we can hear you now. And your okay, video. the connection was lost. I think mm -hmm. maybe I won't uh, be fancy. I'll sign out from the iPad and just give the presentation from my computer and just okay. use the mouse because I don't think it works otherwise. Okay. So, yeah. leave. Let's see. So uh, once Iona is ready, uh, we're, uh, I will, I'm, I'm going to mute everybody and then Joanna and Miriam should unmute themselves. And then okay. Miriam, right. So Joanna, tell me when you're ready. Uh, yes. Just one second. Okay, so you um, you see? Uh, do you see? Do you still see? I don't see this. I don't um, see sharing yet. No. No, I'm not. I'm not sharing yet. Uh, okay. Your screen. Uh, share. There it is. Right. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and uh, from here I can go to view, enter full screen. Yeah. Okay. It will just have to work this way. I can't use the, um, the slides. Part of them get covered up if yeah. uh, I try to use Sorry the... About that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, are, are you ready now? Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm going to mute all and then you two unmute yourselves. You're ready to go. Okay. So good morning. We are starting the last day of our workshop and the first speaker today is uh, Joanna Alexandra Kuman lohi and she will talk about geometric description of topological string partition function. Please, uh, Joanna, go ahead. Yes, thank you very much. So, okay, first of all, I want to, to thank the organizers for uh, the invitation to speak at uh, this workshop. I'm very happy to um, be here and to present some of my work. And as this is the last day of the workshop, I, uh, I hope uh, some of the things that I will say will either um, stand out as similar or related to uh, what uh, some of the other speakers um, before me have discussed here. So um, I will give a progress update on a project to formulate uh, geometric description of topological string partition functions from uh, the perspective of quantum curves and Donaldson Thomas invariants. And this um, will be based on two papers in collaboration with uh, Jörg Teschner and Eli Pomoni in Desi Hamburg, and also with Pietro Longhi from ETH Zurich. So with my uh, collaborators, we have been pursuing this line of research because topological string uh, partition functions are ubiquitous, being objects of interest both in uh, mathematics and in physics. So from the physics perspective, they are important in uh, the study of uh, supersymmetric gauge theories where they can be used to calculate non-perturbative contributions from uh, instantons to gauge theory partition functions. And they can also be recast as an index that counts uh, BPS states. Now, at the same time, from the mathematical point of view, these are related to various enumerative invariants. They have a world sheet description um, in terms of a formal series expansion in the string coupling parameter lambda, whose coefficients uh, are defined through gromov witten invariants. So they are related to other enumerative invariants like the Donaldson Thomas ones. And now given their, the relevance of topological string partition functions, a number of um, approaches have been developed by now towards uh, their computation. So there exists the holomorphic anomaly, the topological vertex, the line of research that looks at topological recursion, 
and uh, more recently, the approach uh, related to spectral theory that has been developed by Marcus Mourinho and his collaborators. Now, the perspective I will discuss looks at the uh, relations of the topological string partition functions to quantum curves and uh, the Nelson Thomas invariants, with the aim to use these towards a geometric characterization of the Z-top. And with this goal in mind, a place to start is to look at uh, the two variants of the topological string. On one side is the A model, which looks at compactifications of type 2A string theory on uh, local Calabria tree folds X, where Z top takes as arguments the Keller moduli of this manifold, and it also depends on uh, the string coupling lambda. And then by mirror symmetry on the dual side are type 2b string theory compactifications on Calabria three folds y, where now the relevant parameters are the complex moduli of this manifold, which are related by the mirror map to the Keller moduli t above. And having said this, one can ask the following question as to whether these z top are some locally defined functions on the Keller moduli space of x or equivalently the complex moduli space. And this question is justified um, because as we have uh, seen earlier this week, Stokes phenomena are to be expected when working with Borel sums. So um, the Z top functions may exhibit jumps between patches on the moduli space. And this is indeed what happens when we can see when performing explicit com computations, for example, using the topological vertex. But for the time being, however, I, want, uh, I would like this question to serve as a motivation for this aim to find uh, such a geometric picture. Starting then with the setup for our problem, what uh, we look at are type 2b string theory uh, compactifications on, a local, on local Calabria tree falls. Why? And these are of the same type as uh, were considered by Ivan Smith earlier this week. So this uh, manifold is uh, defined by an equation where in four complex parameters, where the parameter X lives on a punctured Riemann surface, P is a degree two polynomial in the parameter Y, and Q of X is a meromorphic function. And I will also refer to this when talking um, Loosely speaking, as a quadratic differential, having in mind that it is Q of x dx squared, which is the physically relevant object. Now, uh, generically, Q can be expanded as a sum over terms uh, which characterize the singularities, where this n is the number of uh, punctures on uh, the curve C. And the dots here are placeholders uh, for possible terms with poles of order greater than two. If uh, there are no such higher order terms, the singularities are called regular and otherwise they are irregular. Then the curve, which is determined by uh, the vanishing of this polynomial P is what is called the cyber curve for the theory you are studying, which is a double cover of the base curve C and which labels a family of such Calabria three folds whose complex structure moduli are the parameters which enter the definition of uh, Sigma. And why have I introduced these? Um, it is because such compactifications are relevant in the geometric engineering of a large class of um, 4D supersymmetric gauge theories. Uh, that is the class S that we've heard about uh, earlier this week in uh, Greg Moore's talk and also from Fei Yan on Wednesday. And uh, here I will refer to two examples in this class when discussing uh, the geometric picture for Z-top. Uh, in the first example, C is a cylinder with two mildly irregular singularities. And on uh, the gauge theory side, this corresponds to pure SU2 super Young Mills uh, gauge theory. While um, in the second case, it will, the surface C will be a four puncture sphere with regular singularities, uh, which on 
the class SI corresponds to the SU2 for flavor superaminals theory. So here, including matter. Now, in relation to uh, special geometry and cyber button theory, picking a basis of uh, loops for the first homology of uh, the cyber button curve, this allows to define homological coordinates on uh, the space uh, B, the complex uh, moduli space of the manifold Y. Defining these coordinates as period integrals of uh, the cyber button one form, that is Y dx, where pairs of such coordinates are related through the prepotential function f. And what will play a role in the emerging big picture for uh, the geometric description of Z-top is uh, the Hitchin moduli space seen as a torus vibration over the space where uh, the total space is that of Higgs pairs formed by a vector bundle E and uh, the Higgs field where the Higgs field is an adjoint valued scalar related to uh, the quadratic differential that was introduced above to define uh, sigma here. So let me now outline the guiding idea towards this picture and then schematically mention uh, the steps to get there. So this, all of this follows from a close relation mathematically between the topological string uh, partition functions and a quantization of the cyber Gutten curves, which characterize the gauge theory. And there are different points of view possible here, but I will follow the one through isomonodromy. Uh, that is, um, that refers to isomonodromic deformations of these quantum curves. So what I will talk about is how the variables which enter the topological string partition functions are related to the parameters of the quantum curve. And then uh, I will show how exact WKB analysis defines these. Now, I should say that when working to formulate this uh, picture for the topological strings partition functions, we were guided by indications from physics that the higher genus corrections uh, here are encoded by the quantum cyber Gutten curve. And if time permits, at the end of this, um, at the end of the talk, I will return to this point to say uh, more on this from the physics perspective. But for now, I would like, however, to first give a preview of the emerging big picture, where I sketch the geometric description that we have found for topological string for the topological string partition functions, and then I will explain using examples how this comes about. So as you see here, there are three main parts uh, to this story. The first one establishes the, what the moduli space of quantum curves is. And then there are two levels, the first of which uh, looks at the coordinates on this space that calligraphic. And then one level up, uh, the discussion of the isomonodromic tau functions that are associated to the quantum curves and from which the topological strings partition functions can be extracted um, from um, generalized theta series expansion. Now for some more detail on each of these three points, the procedure to quantize the cyber Gutten curve turns this into a second order differential equation. And what we therefore find is that the moduli space of quantum curves, this is at Cal, is related to the Hitchin moduli space being in fact equivalent to the space of H bar deformed connections on the base curve C. Uh, so what this space is, is uh, the space of such triples that are given by the complex parameter H bar. This is related to the string coupling. A uh, holomorphic vector bundle on uh, the base curve, C and the flat connection considered up to equivalence under gauge transformations. And now by a series of projections, it is possible to go from this space that calligraphic first to the Hitchin moduli space by simply forgetting H bar here and uh, here identifying um, the connection matrix with H bar set to zero with uh, the, the Higgs field. And then from here, 
there is a further projection to the base of the Higgin vibration, which takes which maps the Higgs field to the quadratic differential that defines the Cyber-Gluten curve. So then, turning to the coordinates, the space. Uh, oh, sorry, what is what is capital Y? You have M Z H of Y. What was capital Y? I missed it. Opa, uh, where? In your notation, you have. Oh. Of y. So I, uh, maybe I have a bit of a, I tried to say schematically, we're looking really at the, 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 uh, the hitch in moduli space that it has as a connection for as a, wait, sorry, I should move this. Oh, that's a typo, there should be a C there. I'm really looking at the hitch in moduli space. Okay, that's the hitch in moduli the space of, of, the, of, of the Riemann surface. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe, yes, I, I see. Sometimes I, I changed a bit the notation to make it more intuitive and a little bit backfired. But okay, so let me proceed. So the first point is identifying the space that we are working on, what the moduli space of quantum curves is. Um, then we can turn to the coordinates on the space where the space set calligraphic admits a uh, covering by local patches with their book coordinates on these patches, which are defined using exact WKB analysis um, applied to these uh, differential equations to the quantum curve. And here these coordinates define a uh, one parameter deformation of uh, complex structures on the Hitchin part of the space. And then an important feature of these coordinates is here, it is their asymptotic behavior as uh, h bar goes uh, to zero, as the deformation parameter goes to zero, being related to the homological coordinates on the base of the Hitchin vibration. And now furthermore, as a series of comments, um, related to the BPS structures that uh, Tom Bridgeland has discussed this week. This uh, complex parameter H bar lives on the complex plane without with the origin remove. And this can be seen as a union of wedges uh, separated by rays. And then on each such wedge, it is possible to associate a set of what are known as Foucault stroke coordinates and then transition between uh, different sets of Foucault stroke coordinates as the H bar crosses array uh, these are given by cluster transformations that we have seen uh, this week, which are determined by the BPS invariants, which satisfy the wall crossing formula of Konsevich and Seibelman. Now, uh, it's, this hopefully should ring a bell that the collection of cluster transformations relating sets of four contour of coordinates, these can be seen as input data to uh, a Riemann Hilbert problem to characterize these coordinates, as was considered by Tom Bridgeland in his lectures. And now, what emerges from uh, the study of topological string partition functions is the importance to complete the solution to such Riemann Hilbert problems by including another type of coordinates, that is the Finch and Nielsen type, which emerge as naturally associated to accumulation rays. So these are um, loci on C star where the rays L get infinitesimally close together. And then these uh, coordinates are relevant with regard to the topological string because they allow to naturally associate uh, to um, neighborhoods of the space uh, Z calligraphic uh, neighborhoods which admit weakly coupled regime. To such neighborhoods, it is possible to associate the topological string partition functions. So now going to the next level in this picture that I have outlined. Sorry, can um, I just ask? Can, can I just ask for these Fenchel Nielsen coordinates? Do you need um, a complete pair of pants decomposition or just one accumulation ray? Because you know each kind of tube in your um, Riemann surface will give you some accumulation ray, right? But I, want, I wondered whether you needed a whole pair of pants, like a Strabel differential, uh, sorry, a whole um, pant decomposition, 
decomposition. I, I will show this in examples. So it, oh, yes, okay. when when we look at this, we actually uh, so. Okay, I'll make a very small parenthesis here, and then I'll get back to um, discussing the slide. I said we. Uh, I, I try to give just the big picture up front because hopefully it will ring a bell and there will be parallels with what everyone else has discussed and then show how each of these points emerge and also construct through examples. So in the case of the four puncture sphere, I guess, okay, that's easy because there is only one tube that can appear, but th there I will show uh, how the Finch and Nielsen's enter the story. Okay. Right, thanks. So now going to the next level in this picture, on uh, such local patches U, there exist appropriately normalized uh, tau functions, um, which are associated to the quantum curves and which describe uh, their isomonodromic deformations. And then these uh, tau functions can be seen as um, distinguished local sections of uh, a line bundle over the space of quantum curves, which admit such generalized uh, theta series uh, expansions in the appropriate coordinates, which generate on the right-hand side the topological string partition functions. And now in adopting this point of view, changes of coordinates on uh, overlaps of patches, these are given by uh, these f, these are difference generating functions, which give the change of coordinates between different, normaliz different normalized uh, tau functions and therefore represent the transition functions that uh, define this line bundle. So this was in a very compact condensed form, the, the big picture. Let me just out, outline the, where we're going towards. So uh, we are trying to formulate a picture where the topological string partition functions uh, are seen as sections of a, a holomorphic line bundle over the moduli space of quantum curves. And so to make this idea precise, what I need to address are two points. So first we have to say how to quantize the cyber curve and uh, what precisely is meant by this quantization. I have already briefly given the answer. It is to describe this as a D module while allowing for uh, H bar corrections, whereby the tau function describes isomonodromic deformations of these. And then the second point is to find good coordinates, good parameters for the monodromy data associated to this D module, which are related to appropriate corresponding normalizations for uh, the isomonodromic tau function, in which to expand these guys such that uh, they generate the topological strings partition functions. And this here is the point where uh, XRWKB analysis has a role to play. Now, having said all of this, on the other side, we of course need to compare wherever possible with uh, results for uh, the topological string partition function derived by some well-established method. And here I have in mind the topological vertex. And indeed this is um, how we uh, have gathered supporting evidence for the picture I have presented on the last few slides by uh, studying specific examples. So now uh, I can start going through each of these points. Are there any questions or should I, is it okay to just turn to the quantum curves and the quantization? Yes. Uh, uh, will you consider only differential equations or uh, difference as well? Like the quantum curve belongs to C star cross C star. Uh, just differential equations for now. I will uh, this. I will come back to possible generalizations right at the very end. But for now, just. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. We can then turn uh, to the quantum curves. 
So as I said, the, quant the Seiberguten curve becomes quantized by uh, turning this parameter y into a differential operator that acts on x. So the quantum curve is described by a second order linear differential equation where the classical uh, function q of x is allowed uh, to receive quantum corrections. Now this formulation can be equivalently recast in terms of uh, pairs given by a rank two vector bundle on uh, the base curve C and an H bar connection with uh, a flat section Psi that encodes uh, the solutions to this differential equation. And in local coordinates, this connection can be expressed as an upper which has uh, off diagonal non-zero entries only, uh, one of which is this uh, meromorphic function q of x. And now viewing the quantum curve in this way is useful towards determining uh, what the quantum corrections are. So when considering a generic connection matrix, which has non-trivial entries everywhere, this uh, can be brought to upper form by a singular gauge transformation, uh, which allows to view what the classical piece is in terms of the entries of this matrix, and also explicitly allows to compute the, the quantum corrections, while at the same time setting up the problem such that the monodromy data um, characterizing the connection is general. So, so here- I have, a, I have a question here. I have a question here. So yeah. um, how do you choose the operator ordering? I mean, you could, you could conjugate y by a function of x. Classically, that would be the same that would be the same cyber witten curve. Right? I could take instead of y squared, I could write f of x y squared one over f of x. Okay. Mechanically, that would be different. True, but. Um... So what we do so here, somehow you, somehow you're saying that there's a canonical quantization. In some way, the quantization here just refers to the fact that the curve turns into a differential equation. And once I have uh, this uh, connection, no, I'm saying that the, I'm saying the differential that. equation is ambiguous. Ah. Is, there are always operator ordering ambiguities, always when proceeding from classically to quantum mechanically. And you're saying that there's a uh, implicitly a, a distinguished one. Um, how to answer this? Well, what, what would... I mean, if I yeah. may comment, uh, so of course it's true. Um, uh, however, um, well, of course, it requires some discussion, which perhaps uh, takes time. Uh, I would believe that sort of the general form um, is not going to be affected because the general form is basically controlled by the singularity structure then of the resulting connection or upper. Uh, so it would just uh, uh, correspond to changes of parametrization. So this is what I believe to be true. But of course, a detailed uh, discussion would take more time. Yeah, maybe I'll make some mathematical comment. There is a general question, I believe, first addressed by Maxim that uh, the uh, complex but are algebraic Lagrangian submanifold, say in the cotangent bundle, can be canonically quantized to a holonomic demodule. So this is sort of very special case. You have a complex curve in the cotangent bundle. So then there is kind of believe that you can always quantize canonically, but maybe not constructively like in, in explicit form. And it, it fits with actually with what Maxim was talking, I forgot either in the discussion session or in his talk, that generically there are no, for generic H-bar, there, there are no mm, kind of, you can imagine that on, on the spectral curve, there are no pseudo-holomorphic disks. So then there is a canonical embedding in, 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 in uh, 
age differential equations, age differential operators, as mathematicians would say. So there is, I agree with Jörg that it's a long, long discussion, maybe longer than this talk. Okay, so maybe we can postpone that for the after the end of the talk and let uh, Jana, Joanna to continue, please. Yes, um, it's, it's okay. These discussions can happen uh, at any time. Uh, to finish my answer, I, I had in mind something much more simple because the the whole idea with this construction, I was going to say once I got here to the next slide and looking at a specific example, is just to, so the, the uppers really only give you half of the space and the space of connections. So it was just how to get more parameters to really have generic connections. And then this can be done by including apparent singularities. So uh, what I said on a few minutes ago with the, uh, with the singular gauge transformation, we can take the example here um, of uh, the quadratic differential that would correspond to a punctured Riemann surface with only regular singular points. The um, other cases with irregular singularities can be uh, obtained from this by colliding pairs of regular singular points, so in a collision limit. So now, the gauge transformation that I mentioned on the previous slide creates uh, this upper with apparent singularities here with um, extra parameters V and uh, U, which come together with a set uh, of constraints. And then these equations together with the um, uh, constraints from the regularity of the quadratic differential at infinity these are enough in order to determine these uh, parameters h that enter here as functions of u and v. And then such variations of these parameters h with respect to the mo to z, with respect to a motion of uh, the punctures on the base curve c. Um, this is such that the monodromy data for the connection remains unchanged. So, this means that these H are the Hamiltonians that uh, generate isomonodromic deformations, and they are by definition generated by the isomonodromic tau function. Now, remark that uh, this tau function, um, the way it is defined here, it is only defined up to normalis, up to multiplication by some function which is independent of the parameter Z. So this definition leaves uh, some freedom in the precise normalization of tau. And here I, I thought I would include two useful references where the tau functions that correspond on the class S side to the pure SU2 superangulus theory and the SU2 for flavor theory. Um, so these tau functions are discussed here and the main result um, is that uh, these admit such uh, um, generalized theta series expansions of the type I've mentioned in uh, the preview. Now, this is just a small remark here. What I want to say is that these tau functions, they are functions which depend on the monodromy data, the space of which is the character variety. So the space of representations from the fundamental group of uh, the base curve into SL2C considered a pre-equivalence under overall conjugation. And the algebraic uh, structure of this is expressed using trace functions of holonomies around loops uh, in the fundamental group. And uh, um, looking at possible parameterizations for the monodromy data, what these can be in terms of, it is in terms of uh, for Kontrov coordinates and Finch or Finch and Nielsen coordinates. Both of these provide rational parameterizations for these trace functions. And in one case, the Fogontrov coordinates, these are associated to a past decomposition of the base curve C, while the Finch and Nielsen coordinates are, um, sorry, the, the Fogontrov coordinates are associated to a triangulation of the base curve, while the Finch and Nielsen's are associated to pair of past decompositions. So, uh, we, can, we need to look at such uh, parameterizations 
and understand how to find appropriate uh, ones in different uh, patches of the moduli space of quantum curves. Sorry, can I, can I ask a question? Your tau yeah. function seems to be a function of a lot of variables now, the monodromy data, the positions of the apparent singularities and these nu's. Um, a new eyes. Are these all independent or how yeah, do I think so about it? Uh, mu is the monodromy data collectively. Like I'm not uh, specifying what types of coordinates, how they enter or what. But the, do you consider new uh, eye to be monodromy data? Sorry? Do you consider the new eye to be monodromy data? Uh, the X's are the parameters that are parameters for the monodromy data. That's it. Right, and but on the, the previous depth. slide, you had some news, right? You had the positions of the poles and the first order singularities at them. This new oh, eye. These guys, you mean? Uh, no, the new, the V. Is it a V? That's a V and that's yeah, a U. Yeah. yeah. Well, is, aren't they functions of, of the Vs and the Us as well? Uh, it depends how you. Uh, <laughs> these are also good parameters for the monodromy data. So I'm saying take, uh, when looking at tau, just take monodromy data, generic for now, because I don't want to commit to any parameterizations, and uh, the Zs. And the Zs will enter, I will say this, they enter in um, the instant on expansions when I look at the, um, the um, logic strings. Yes, they are all parameters. You see there are derivatives with respect to this yeah. new V. Yeah, it's like you, you change the uh, coefficients of the spectral curve, it gives you a bunch of parameters and you have this H bar, which is another. It's like moduli of complex structures on, on your three Calabiao and this H bar additional. So then the function, this tau function will be the function on H bar and the moduli of Calabiao three folds, if you'd like, or on the line bundle of this moduli. If I may very quickly add, so I mean, if mu monodromy data and z are fixed, then u i and u i are determined by Riemann Hilbert. So I hope I don't get, uh, I don't have uh, too many spoilers happening, but okay. What I want to say is that. Um, we are looking for uh, such coordinates for the monodromy data. And uh, the way to associate distinguished coordinates to different regions of the moduli space of quantum curves is through exact WKB analysis. So this is what I will turn to now. I've discussed the quantization of the curves. Now the coordinates. So on the one hand, quantization of uh, the quantization of the cyberquitan curve leads to a differential equation whose solutions uh, can be studied using exact uh, WKB analysis as formal series expansion expansions in the deformation parameter uh, H bar. So such solutions normalized the zero of the quadratic differential can be constructed using um, a set of recursion relations which determine these formal series S as uh, solutions to the associated Riccati equation. Now, on the other hand, the quadratic differential determines uh, a Stokes graph on the base curve C, whose uh, lines are formed by points X, which satisfy a constraint on the integral of the Cyberguten one form. And then a recent proof has shown these uh, series to be Borel summable away from the Stokes curves. And the WKB solutions uh, satisfy certain uh, uh, relations under analytic continuation across the Stokes curve. So this is encoded by um, the Stokes matrices. And then an important object that can be defined using uh, the formal series S is what is called the Voros symbol and is associated to particular loops on sigma. And this has been shown to be Borel summable when the Stokes graph is generic. And I will say in one minute what this is. But for now, when these guys are Borel summable, they can be used to define coordinates 
on uh, the moduli space of quantum curves. So what we have established is that uh, different, or what I have said is that different regions uh, in this space uh, and therefore different coordinates are distinguished by the corresponding Stokes graphs. And so it is useful, I think, to look at a few examples, noting that such Stokes graphs have appeared in many uh, works in relation to class S theories and their BPS spectra. And I have not made any attempt to um, cite, um, to give a full citation for this. It's just a few select ones that I have included. Now, taking the case of uh, the cylinder, I have sketched here a generic Stokes graph with three Stokes curve depicted in black, which emerge from each of the two branch points. And each curve connects uh, its branch points to one of the punctures. So this, this is what I mean by a generic Stokes graph. And uh, generic Stokes graphs are dual to a WKB triangulation which I've depicted here by the dashed lines, uh, whose edges stretch in, inside a Stokes region in between uh, the punctures. Now, when C is a three puncture sphere, the possible uh, types of generic Stokes graphs have been uh, classified by the number of Stokes curves running into each of the punctures, which I depicted here at zero, one, and uh, infinity. So these are the generic graphs. At the opposite extreme, a special class of quadratic differentials has uh, Stokes curves that connect um, only branch points. So this class of differentials uh, represents a real slice in the moduli space of parameters. And uh, these are rep represented by the Jenkins Strebel differentials. Going to a more uh, general case, when generic Stokes graphs appear on a four punctured sphere, it is possible to identify a pass composition of uh, the surface from the, the parts of the Stokes graph, which have on the individual resulting trinions, one of the four possible topologies here. And furthermore, in this situation, so I have said that the Borel sums of Borel symbols uh, define coordinates on the moduli space of quantum curves. These coordinates have been recently identified with the four contra coordinates associated to the WKB triangulation dual to the Stokes graph. So as such, uh, the Voro symbols define co coordinates on ZCAL and then transformations of these Voro symbols, which are associated to uh, a flip of the WKB triangulation, these are induced by a change uh, in the topology of the Stokes graph. Uh, and uh, the trans these transformations take the form of uh, cluster mutations, the cluster mutations of the four contour coordinates. So these represent examples of the Stokes phenomena that have been discussed this week. Now, this is the four contour case. In the special case where uh, Fenchel Nielsen Stokes graphs appear on the four puncture sphere, these uh, determine a pass decomposition naturally. And then on each of the resulting three puncture spheres, they can have one of these two topologies. Now, I have said a number of times that these coordinates are important from the perspective of topological uh, stream partition functions. So let me now pause to explain one way to define um, these Fenchel Nielsen coordinates in the current case, that of the four puncture sphere, without reference to Stokes graphs or exact WKB for, to begin with. So we can define a pair of Fenchel Nielsen uh, coordinates, sigma and eta, through uh, the gluing construction when viewing this four puncture sphere as composed of two trinions, which are glued to a connecting uh, cylinder A. So in this case, we have seen that uh, solu the solutions to the quantum curve are captured by a flat section psi for the corresponding holomorphic connection, which can be represented on uh, the individual three puncture spheres in the factorized problems 
by two uh, matrix valued functions uh, phi. Then the coordinate sigma uh, in this pair is defined by the eigenvalue of the diagonal monodromy of uh, these solutions um, associated to the cutting curve uh, gamma s, while its partner eta is defined by the holonomy of these solutions between uh, the two boundaries of the cylinder. Now, this leaves an ambiguity in the definition of this coordinate, which is fixed when these um, uh, when these functions are fixed on uh, the rel on their corresponding uh, three puncture sphere. Now, such uh, functions phi can be written in terms of solutions to the hypergeometric equation with a residual freedom on each of the two three puncture spheres encapsulated by a complex number, which, determined the, which determines the relative normalization of the two solutions. So now the, the punchline with all of this is that it is possible to fix a reference coordinates called this eta zero somewhere in the moduli space. And then any other choice will be related to this one um, through the corresponding normalization factors n here. Now, such fenchel nielsen type coordinates can also be defined using exact WKB analysis, although here this is done rather indirectly. So why do I say this? Because these fenchel nielsen stokes graphs, I have said up here for uh, special values, special pairs of the quadratic differential and uh, this parameter h bar. And then any small perturbation of this uh, parameter will destroy all of the saddle trajectories and make the Stokes graph generic. Then the exact WKB analysis can be used to determine um, WKB solutions on each uh, of the three puncture spheres um, on each pair of bands in the decomposition. And then their relative normalization allows to define uh, the eta coordinate, while sigma is defined uh, by the monodromy of these WKB solutions around the cutting curve in the past decomposition. So I have um, talked about both types of coordinates. On the one hand, it is true that uh, there exists much work that has been um, focused on investigating the for contra coordinates and the transitions between such coordinates. But I've just tried to emphasize uh, the importance of the Fenchel-Nielsen coordinates with regards to topological string. And I will, like I've said uh, when I was discussing with Tom, I will um, uh, support this at the end of the talk when I also give examples on how to extract C top from uh, the isomonotomy tau functions. But the point I want to highlight now is that um, the fenchel nielsens and the Fogontra coordinates are in fact uh, closely related more than they appear to be. And this we can see by looking at two instructive examples which display a transition between the Pogontrov and Fenchel-Nielsen coordinates. So the first example is uh, uh, that where the base curve C is the cylinder. On one side here are the Fenchel-Nielsen coordinates in terms of which the monodromy matrices which are associated to paths around the cylinder and crossing the cylinder uh, can be simultaneously diagonalized. On the other side are the Fogontrov coordinates, which are associated to um, the WKB triangulation, which is dual to the Stokes graph. And uh, these two sets of parameters are related through a simple transformation. Now, when performing a flip of the triangulation and a relabeling, this generates a dent twist on uh, the cylinder and it transforms the for contra coordinates by a class of transformation. At the same time, the same transformation has a much more simple effect on the pension Nielsen coordinates. And then repeating this uh, sequence of uh, flips an infinite number of times. So this is what Guy Ottomar and Iski referred to as uh, a juggle. 
allows to see that the fenton nielsen coordinates are in fact limits of the Fogontrov type. So from this perspective, uh, what emerges is that the fenton nielsen coordinates serve as a natural completion for the Fogontrov ones. So this was one simple example, but the transition we have seen on uh, the cylinder, this generalizes. And um, if we look at the second example, that of the four puncture sphere, we can see how this happens. In this case, uh, taking a pair of pants decomposition that is defined by a Stokes graph, which uh, on the, which, um, where the pants decomposition, where the cutting curve that separates the punctures on the four puncture sphere is the analog of the cutting curve that separates the punctures at zero and infinity on the cylinder. Looking at uh, the anti-Stokes graph, uh, these generic Stokes graphs also um, resemble each other on the connecting cylinder. On the, so the Stokes graph on the four puncture sphere has a portion on the cylinder connecting the two pairs of pants that resembles the Stokes graph on the cylinder C02. In this case, the fenton nielsen coordinates that are, are associated to the annulus here, UMV, map by the same transformation to the corresponding uh, bunch of coordinates on the dual triangulation. And reassuringly, this consistently and non-trivially allows to identify the trace functions associated to the relevant loops on the surface. So what this shows is that the for control of Fenton-Nielsen transition generalizes. And then these uh, two types can be combined to obtain also transitions between Fenton-Nielsen coordinates. And this is what uh, is useful when looking at topological strings partition functions. So now this brings me back to um, the points that I wanted to address. So far I have discussed how to systematically uh, uh, find good parameterizations for the monodromy data. And uh, I have um, not yet discussed or said much about uh, the top functions. So now I would like uh, to turn to um, two examples of such top functions where theta series expansions uh, have been shown to exist and then explain how uh, good coordinates can be matched to appropriate corresponding normalizations uh, via exact WKB. Are there uh, any questions at this point maybe? No. Okay. Okay. So they yes. are probably, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Um, so the first example that I would like to discuss is that of the Panlevetri tau function, in which uh, case the quadratic differential has two irregular singularities of order three at uh, zero and infinity. So the, surf, the base curve is the cylinder that we have just discussed. And this example is related on uh, the gauge theory side to the pure SU2 superannual theory. That, and it was studied by uh, the tau function in this case was studied by its Lisovi and Tuki, who showed that it admits two generalized theta series expansions of uh, the type I had uh, uh, mentioned at the beginning of the talk. And these are in two sets of different coordinates. And indeed on uh, the left, this is the case of the short distance expansion, which is equivalent to the um, weakly coupled regime of the gauge theory. And here I have verified that this expansion generates topological string partition functions e top as calculated using the topological vertex. Sorry, what is, little, what is little r? What, are you, is this equivalent to the limit u goes to infinity or something like that? Uh, no, r is uh, related to this lambda. Oh. It's just... Um, yes, yes, got it, got it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, that is equivalent to u goes to infinity. 
yes. Well, yeah, the ratio matters, of course. Okay. Um, so I said that here on this side, we find the topological strings partition functions. Um, what we can also identify here is that these uh, coordinates, sigma and eta, um, are of Venture Nielsen type because uh, in this coordinates, the relevant uh, monodromy matrices can be simultaneously diagonalized. And then on the other side is the long distance expansion, which corresponds to the strongly coupled regime of the gauge theory. And here we can identify the coordinates mu and rho to be of uh, a contour of type with exponential uh, versions of the two coordinates related by the simple transformation that I have just shown when discussing the venture nielsen for contour of transitions. And now furthermore, the point to note is that these, um, uh, this function uh, has uh, a different normalization um, uh, these two uh, generalized theta series expansions are uh, related by uh, this uh, function, which is a difference generating function that gives the change of coordinates between the two regimes. And this is uh, an example of the transition function for the line bundle on the moduli space of quantum curves that uh, I have introduced when giving the, the preview of the big emerging geometric picture. Now, as a second example, uh, there is the example of the Panleve 6 tau function, in which case C is a four puncture speed with regular singularities. And this is the case that is related to the SU2 for flavor uh, gauge theory. Uh, here, the tau function can be found in a convenient form in uh, these references, where it was conjectured and then proven to admit uh, such theta series expansions. On um, the right hand side, in here, this contains the instant on uh, partition function of the gauge theory, which can be determined using the topological vertex. But note, however, that uh, such theta series expansions exist only for suitably chosen monodromy parameters. Um, and concurrently appropriate normalizations of the tau function. And then the, uh, the second important point to note is that there exist changes of normalizations, which are given by, uh, so there exist a change, there exist changes of coordinates that are given by uh, difference generating functions, which obey certain periodicity uh, properties, which define corresponding changes of normalizations for the tau functions, such that the form of these generalized theta series expansion is unchanged. So then having a closer look at the structure of this uh, equation, two things to notice are the following. On one hand, there is the Z dependence, where the Z uh, are the parameters of the punctures. So in the case, uh, the this, Z dependence, this is what is controlled by the isomonodromy. Uh, on the other hand, the normalization of the tau function uh, in the limit where this Z goes to zero, this is controlled by uh, exact WKB analysis, which also determines these uh, monodromy parameters, uh, the parameters for the monodromy data. So what I want to say by this is that the function um, function that gives the chorus that relates the parameter eta here to the distinguished datum that I said we fixed somewhere in the um, moduli space. This is related to the function that also gives the corresponding normalization on the tau side. And uh, from the WKB analysis perspective, uh, this function is given by uh, a generalization of the Voros symbol, uh, where these guys here are ratios of WKB solutions with different normalization points. So we can look at this in a bit more detail now. I'm skipping, uh, yes, I will skip a slide that is slightly more technical 
and just uh, come to the example of the four puncture sphere. So in this case, assume um, that we are starting with uh, an S-channel pants decomposition with the two pairs of pants glued to a connecting cylinder. As I said, when defining the venture newson coordinates, this um, defines the coordinate sigma for the monodromy data so see when going around the cylinder, but not this parameter eta. And uh, this, um, the definition for this really depends on the precise type of the Stokes graph. Um, I see that I'm ro closely running out of time. So I will uh, hurry up to just say that if, um, so two cases to consider here. Assume that we start with, uh, Sto with Stokes uh, graphs that on each of these two pair of pants is uh, of type S2. Then uh, the relevant uh, Voros symbol, this exists in literature and there's no ambiguity what to choose here. It will be associated to uh, the puncture, the branch point closest to uh, the puncture that connects to the cylinder in each of the two cases. And uh, we can cal calculate what the coordinates are and the appropriate normalizations. And what uh, we have found and um, verified is that these uh, functions are explicitly given in terms of Barnes G functions. And then the generalized theta series expansion. Uh, so this combination of the monotomy parameters and the normalization um, does produce a generalized theta series expansion, where on the right-hand side, we find uh, the topological string partition function computed for the SU2 for flavor uh, superior theory in a certain chamber of the moduli of the extended Keller moduli space for the Calabi outrefold X. Now, this is just one chamber. To go to a different chamber, we have to change uh, the Stokes graph. And if we look, on this side, changing from the S2 type Stokes graph to the generic ones that has two um, Stokes line running into each of the punctures, there are now two relevant branch points to consider, so two possible normalization. Um, and what we have done was to take an average of these in order to define uh, the appropriate monodromy parameters and normalizations in the new chamber of the extended Keller moduli space. And now the punchline is that what this leads to is uh, a systematic match between, on the one hand, suitably uh, normalized tau functions with appropriate corresponding monodromy parameters, which together generate these uh, generalized uh, theta series expansions, where on the right-hand side, what we find are the topological strings uh, partition functions in the different chambers of the extended Keller moduli space of parameters. So to give here a bit more, uh, just a, a little bit more detail to this statement, on one side, we have the Fenchel Nielsen coordinates that are associated to the possible Fenchel Nielsen Stokes graphs on the four puncture sphere. And then on the other side, we have the Z-top calculated for the different possible toric graphs, the um, set of which is related by uh, sequences of flops. So these, um, the effect of these flops is just to produce an analytic continuation of the Z top across walls in the extended Keller moduli space of parameters. So these uh, slides with the topological string construction are just if anyone is interested uh, in them. And also I have um, a few words that I can say about the, um, the physics intuition that, um, um, that has um, brought about this uh, picture. But okay, now I can just, um, I would like to return to the slides uh, I had at the very beginning announcing, uh, giving a preview of uh, the emerging big picture because this, um, this can now serve as uh, a concise summary and also a good point to, um, to discuss some of the things. 
So I showed how quantizing the cyber Gutten curve defines the moduli space of quantum curves as a deformation of the Hitchin moduli space. And I have also uh, tried to show how this, um, um, I have shown uh, parameterization of the space in terms of local patches, which uh, admit uh, Darboux coordinates, which can be determined using exact WKB analysis and uh, whose asymptotic, uh, which are asymptotically related to the homological coordinates on the base of the agent vibration. So I discussed what these uh, coordinates on the calligraphic uh, are. When they are of a of type, they can be identified with uh, Voror symbols and changes uh, of coordinates are given by uh, cluster transformations, which are determined by the donelson thomas invariance. And then I argued that from the perspective of the topological string, um, when considering the collection of uh, cluster transformations relating the different sets of coordinates, one should take into account uh, also the Finch and Nielsen type. And then at the next level on the local patches, uh, you on the space at calligraphic, there exist the appropriately normalized uh, isomondromic tau functions which uh, are associated to the quantum curve and allowed to extract uh, the topological string um, partition functions, uh, where the tau functions are seen as distinguished local sections of a holomorphic line bundle, which is defined by the um, functions that give the transformations uh, between uh, transformations of coordinates on overlapping patches. So um, this, okay, this presents uh, the story a little bit backwards to the way we have uh, constructed it. Now, um, this brings me to the final slide. I'm sorry, I'm over, over time by five minutes. I will be very brief here. I've uh, collected here a few points that are interesting in terms as an outlook and which are, can roughly be um, grouped into extending this picture on the one hand and on the other hand, relating it to um, other uh, results that exist in literature. So clearly we can, uh, a natural point uh, to look are the lifts from four dimensions to five dimensions, which are natural for the topological string. And here uh, much is known on different piece, well, different pieces of the story um, have been generalized. So the tau functions become Q-deformed uh, tau functions and the spectral networks are replaced with uh, their exponentiated um, exponential counterparts. An, uh, an interesting point to note that uh, I hope will start some discussion and uh, from which I hope to learn about uh, uh, today a bit more is um, the, the way we have construct is the relation to the geometry of the hypermultiplet uh, moduli spaces. So this is in the work of uh, Alexandra of Cresson and Piolin and also studied by Andy Neitsky. Now, what I mean by this is that in, uh, in that case, there was a line bundle that was constructed and um, just at the level of the construction is the transition functions that define this line bundle in our context are equivalent, at least uh, when looking at the four contour of coordinates to those for the hyperholomorphic line bundle. And both are related to, or can be related to topological strings. So this is one uh, point that would be very interesting to investigate. Now, um, uh, uh, an expansion of the story is uh, in relation to the 2D, 4D wall crossing that was studied by uh, Gaia Tomura and Naitsky. And uh, what I mean here is, to see how uh, the picture that I have presented changes when including surface defects that are points on um, the base curve on C. And further, there are the two comparisons to the other lines of research, so the relation to topological recursion and uh, also to what Marcos Mourinho was telling us about, uh, the, um, which gives another non-perturbative definition of CTOP. Okay, hey, so let's thank Ioana uh, for this uh, nice informative talk. And if there are any questions, 
please, uh, you know, go ahead. Uh, I suggested if you want to raise a hand or just say in, in chat, you want to ask a question, please. Oh, I, I don't have an option to raise That's it. Fine, please go ahead. Yeah, we, we yeah it's actually uh, about the thing which is not visible now on your slide. It's relation oh. to topological recursion. When you look for uh, perturbative expansion in H bar, so mm -hmm. I think uh, those people uh, gave some answer for, for Z top. And exactly. I'm just wondering if, if you take in your formula uh, mm, this perturbative expansion in H bar. Uh, the formula which relates the uh, tau function on the left hand side and the top on the right hand side. And just but this is a, yes, uh, this is encoded in there. We don't actually have, I mean, the, uh, we don't perform any summation over the H bar. It, it wants a, taking the asymptotic expansion in H bar then it would be recovered. Yeah, but um, I mean that in topological recursion, those yes. people quantized um, uh, not, uh, yeah, the wave function, which means like the top as a function on the moduli space of classical spectral curves. So the number of parameters is the same. Mm -hmm. They have uh, those parameters on the moduli of spectral curves, which is I think MH in your notation. Mm -hmm. And they have H bar, which I believe C star in your notation. Yeah, so this means that these two things can be compared. Yes, yes, yes. And there is, um, I absolutely agree. And there is, uh, um, I think I, I, I cited the paper by Kohei Iwaki where he does uh, have very uh, convincing results. Okay, in this case, he's looking at the Pandeve one tau function, but um, uh, it, is, it should be absolutely comparable. May I add a comment here? Because I think that's indeed an interesting point. So, um, well, in the way we look at it, of course, uh, Z dependence is taken care of by isomonodromy. So then uh, the story can be factorized, sort of the boundary conditions are fixed by the, um, uh, by the three punctured sphere cases. And Topological recursion for three punctured spheres has also been uh, um, computed by Ivaki and collaborators. And in fact, uh, what we checked also is that um, the result of the Borel resummation of the topological partition functions for the three punctured sphere bits uh, matches with our results because oh. also there you're going to have a Stokes phenomenon. So um, the result depends on basically which chamber and extended uh, uh, Kähler moduli space you're in or which uh, graph you're considering and it matches, it fits perfectly sort of to the picture, which was more like tailored on the coordinates, but you could also look at it that way. Oh, okay, great. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, Greg would like to ask a question and then Aaron, please. Greg, go ahead. Okay, yes, I actually had a couple. Um, Yona, could you please go back to the uh, slide with the tau function for panel of A3? Mm -hmm. I didn't stop you because time was getting short, but there are a few things you didn't define there. <laughs> oh, there are many things I did not define because I really just wanted to, this is all in the paper by its Lisovi and Tuki. And all I wanted to show is that two. You know, okay, yeah. yeah, there we are. Yeah, but I, I'm just curious. What are what are what are the functions capital G in the in the strong coupling? Sorry, the weak coupling expansion. Uh, these guys. Yeah, they're the Barnes uh, G functions. Barnes G functions, and then you're yeah, they come? And a curly F on the left hand side in terms of a curly F on the right hand side. What's that curly F on the right hand side? Uh, that's a G. No, no, no. Sorry. I'm still talking about the weak coupling expansion. Yes. There's a function curly F of sigma plus n comma t. Oh, that's tau. That's tau here? No, no. <laughs> I know that's the result. Huh. An expansion, a sum over n. You have a function. Oh, this guy. Yeah. Oh, that's the instanton part. Well, I that's mean, uh, that, that's, uh, that gives the instanton part of z top. But what is the function? I mean, World sheet instantons? 
No, the, in the, the gauge theory. Ah. The gauge theory is done. So when uh, I... So that's I, the pre-potential of the gauge theory? The cross-off partition function. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, okay. okay. Um, so let's see. So another, I, then I had a comment, which is, um, so in relating uh, von Gontroff to Fenchel, complexified Fenchel Nielsen coordinates, mm -hmm. you know, this kind of taking a juggle limit, it's a hard way to make a limit. Uh, there's, there's another way to, um, to relate the coordinates. So if you think about Fei Yan's talk, mm -hmm. uh, so she was talking about these. Um, these line defects, and if you can look at their and their expectation values. You can ex so you can expand those. You have a typically a, a finite Laurent expansion uh, in terms of uh, Fokontarov coordinates mm -hmm. with integer coefficients, the framed BPS. Yeah. On the other hand, they're very simple expressions for them, or relatively simple expressions for them in terms of Fenchel Nielsen coordinates. Absolutely. Right. So, but it's the same physical quantity. Yes. And, and in this so, case. So, okay. So, so that, so equating those two expressions gives, if you like, a change of variables formula. Which is exactly this one. Well. In this case. This is in, in for one juggle, I, as Tom was, Tom Richland was saying, you know. Ah. Uh, you have if you're if you're looking more globally. I agree that this is this is a special case. This uh, the juggle is a special case of that. Okay. Yes. But I would say that the, the general. I mean, the only way I know how you would go about finding the change of coordinates would be what, by what I was just saying. Okay. That was a comment. The last thing is a question. So you looked at SU two pure SU two and SU two NF equals four. Mm -hmm. SU two n equals two star. <laughs> there, there is, uh, there has been a paper on that. Um, I think it was last year by um, Fabrizio Del Monte and uh, okay, I don't remember all of the authors. They're from CISA, so they looked at the tau functions and uh, how to relate these to conformal blocks. And there is something that happens there. Like I okay, don't, okay, there's good. an extra element that appears in the picture. So I was quiet about that point on purpose. I mean, if I may add here, uh, uh, we, uh, well, at least sketch the story for arbitrary genus and number of punctures. So uh, the, the story just continues. Uh, there's not a problem with that. Okay, so since we are running short on time, maybe Aaron could ask a brief question and then also, uh, uh, Tom, I think, uh, but we should really probably wrap it up in another five minutes. Aaron. Okay. Uh, I don't know if mine is brief, so maybe I can move it to the chat. The, the question was uh, it, whether you could repeat um, how those Hamiltonians HR work for the isomenogenic deformations. Mm -hmm. What I sort of got out of the discussion was that um, this expression for QH bar on the slide, which involved, you know, some terms with you know, H's terms with the delta coefficients and then mm -hmm. um, H bar proportional terms with nu and U coefficients mm -hmm. can actually describe all, like every quantum curve up to isomorphism. And then the, somebody's, I think somebody said that the nu's and the U's, those form, or somehow that th those form coordinates for like the space of all, all quantum curves. So, uh, okay. Um, oh, how, uh, I, I wonder how I can uh, say this quickly. Um, there, there's, there's not, uh, I, we're not bringing anything new to the story because this is the old story about operas with uh, apparent singularities. So I said the motivation for this was to just bring in some more coordinates so that we can parameterize the full moduli space of flat connections or the what we were working on. So this yeah. brings in the new coordinates. Now those new coordinates, 
if you consider them as independent coordinates, can be seen as coordinates on the moduli space of flat connections or on the character variety. I'm being yeah. very sketchy here. Yeah. You so can solve. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I'll be very, very quick here. So you have, because I've written that in the Q of H bar in the specific way that I presented it, mm -hmm. in order for it to allow that form, I had to write these constraints. So you can, okay. turn, you can turn the problem around to actually see what the HR parameters are in terms of U and V as functions, just fully mm -hmm. specify them. Then logically, there is a separate step to say that if the H's vary with respect to U or V in the mm -hmm. way that I had on the slides, I mean, this is the Garnier system, the specialization of the Schlesinger. If this happens, then the monodromy data for the connection is uh, conserved, nothing changes. Okay. So, and thereby, that, that just says that therefore the H's are like what are defined to be the Hamiltonians and they define the top function. So it's, um, okay. yeah, it's just the, the logical step how you get to top functions by starting with the differential equations for the quantum curve. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I guess, uh, you know, this would be probably a good cutoff and uh, Tom 